guys, I'm Laura Vitale, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I want to share with you my take on a Thai basil chicken. Now, I know this isn't going to be authentic, I'm sure of it, and if you do have an authentic recipe for this, I would love for you to leave it down below, along with your tips and tricks for making it outstanding. A lot of you guys know I live in Jersey, kind of in the middle of nowhere. I think when people think of Jersey, they think of like Jersey City, but outside of New York City, that's not where I live. I live all the way down the turnpike. <laughs> I live in the middle of nowhere, and to get really good Thai food, I have to go to Philly, and I'm not doing that in the middle of a work week. And Thai basil chicken is something that Joe and I have loved since the first, I think since we first started dating, which has been, I think, over 12 years now. Can't do math that quick. Um, but I wanted to recreate it at home with ingredients I could easily find at the grocery store and I didn't want to sacrifice on flavor and I feel like this is so, so delicious. I think you're going to absolutely love it. Now we do have some really good Asian supermarkets um, about 45 minutes away from me. So when I am in that area, I always stop in to get Thai, ba thai basil so that I can make this with Thai basil. But if I can't, then I just use a regular store bought like regular basil and it works just as well. Not as good, but it works it's delicious, trust me. Uh, but if you can get your hands on Thai basil, do so. Okay, the ingredients you'll need, this makes enough for two people, generously, because that's how we eat around here. Boneless, skinless chicken breast, thinly sliced. I've got some scallions. This is like the lower half of the scallion. I cut it in about two inch pieces. I saved the top here to slice later. I've got a chili, uh, it's actually two chilies that'll leave the seeds in, lots of garlic. You'll need, for the sauce, you'll need some water, some oyster sauce, some fish sauce, some soy sauce, some sugar, and you'll need some neutral oil. I'm using avocado oil, but anything neutral without flavor is perfect for this. Ideally, you would be doing this in a wok. I don't have a wok because a wok just does not work well with my stovetop burner situation. So, once I can figure that out, I will get myself a nice wok. But a nice, really large nonstick skillet will do with some of the oil in there to get it really nice and hot. You wanna make sure you're working with a big surface, otherwise you're gonna have to do this in two batches because what we do not want is to steam our chicken. We wanna crisp up our chicken and get it absolutely delicious. So what we're gonna do before we even get the chicken in there, because I really want that oil to be screaming hot, we're gonna take all of the sauce ingredients and make the sauce. So in the water, we're gonna add the oyster sauce, you're gonna add your soy, and you're gonna add your fish sauce, and your sugar. I know some will ask if you can replace the fish sauce or you can replace anything else, and the answer is no. <laughs> it just will not taste the same without these, and I'm telling you, this is as close to really good Thai basil chicken recipes, that, uh, dishes that we've had out, but it is better than most that we've had like from local places, I'm sorry, but it is. Add your chicken to your skillet. You wanna get that chicken really crispy. It's gonna splatter, so be careful. Get that nice and flat, and then cook it for about two minutes. Okay, it's been about three minutes. I typically, once I put the chicken in, I don't really touch it, because I want it to start getting that beautiful crust on it. I have my heat up really high. Um, this is something, like I said, you're going to get splattered. It's easier to use a, a, a wok, but I don't have one. Now we're going to add scallions, chili, and garlic. And for the most part, we're really just not going to touch this a lot. If we can just get that chicken to crisp up some more, that would be great. So I'm going to leave this in here, saute a couple more minutes. And by this point, you should already have your rice ready because this dish comes together in less than 10 minutes and the rice usually takes longer. So if you are serving it with rice, then I suggest getting it done ahead of time. That is looking perfect. We're gonna go ahead and add our sauce. Give it a stir. And now you're just gonna cook this until the sauce really reduces and it thickens and it's just like the most delicious thing ever, ever, ever. I'm gonna go ahead and get some basil ready, slice the green ends of my scallions to top this with and we are ready to eat. That is done. Add in your basil. Now like I said, I know this is not Thai basil and it would be so much better if it was, but we balling with what we got. <laughs> it is what it is. We make it work. You know, whenever I do go to, you know, the outside of town where there's like Trader Joe's and Whole Foods and Wegmans and H Mart, you best believe I spend the day <laughs> from hopping from one store to the other and I stock up on my sauces and my basil and all of the good things, you know? 
fat, they only last so long. You know what I'm saying? That is so beautiful. I mean, look at the consistency of that sauce. It just like hugs the chicken so perfectly. I love this. I'm gonna go ahead and serve it with some rice. Oh, I'm just gonna take a bite. I'm gonna serve it with some rice, stallions. Dinner's gonna be done. It will be perfect. Ha. Mm. Like, honestly, amazing. Absolutely amazing. You will love it. I know you do. I know you will. Go to laurainthekitchen.com for the written recipe. This is Joe and I's dinner, so I can definitely double dip if I want to. I hope you enjoy spending time with me. I will see you in the next one. Bye.